In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to create buttons that um, randomly flash and can be activated nice and easily in sequencer. So see how those buttons start to flash at that point? So you can all the laser thingy. Um, so yeah, in order to do that, we're going to use this simple kind of gradient texture that I created in Photoshop. And all this is, is a um, simple black and white image and I've just made areas of white split into five zones like that. Now the reason I've done that is because what I want to do is have some buttons that, that flash for a very short period of time and some that flash for longer, some that glow for longer. So this way I can unwrap some buttons to this area, some to this area, some to this area, some to this and some to this. And then I'm going to use a pan node just to move this texture horizontally. So when the UV is in the white area, it will be glowing, and when it's in the black area, it won't be glowing. Um, so I've just made a new material here. And first, let's just make this a bit bigger. The first thing we want to do is just define a kind of simple base color for this. Like you might will probably be using an actual kind of texture, but just for this demo, I'm just going to use like a kind of basic base. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is drag our image into our scene, into our material. And then we're going to use a panner node. Just hold P and left click and that will create your panner. I'm going to right click and create a texture coordinates node. And we'll also create a time time node as well. We'll drop that into time and we'll drop that into coordinates. Now within the panel node you can see you can control the speed here. And obviously why? We don't want this moving up at all. All we want is it moving horizontally. So let's try putting a speed in there of say 2 and dropping that into our UV. And we should see our texture start to move along. Okay, that's all right. We can obviously drop in minus 2 because we probably want it to move the other way instead. That's better. So next we will we will need to actually define like the color and the strength of our glow. So I'm going to add a lerp in here and we'll want to drop that into our alpha slot. Next we'll want to create a free constant by holding free and left clicking and this is going to define like our glow color. Next we're going to add in two multiplies. So we have our color here and what we need to do the next is drop two scalar parameters into the scene. So hold S left click and we'll call this glow max. And then hold S left click and we'll call this glow min. So we'll drop that into B and him into B. And then our color can just both go straight into A. So our glow max, we'll just set this to say 40 to start with. And our glow min, maybe we'll just put this on say 0.05 or something, just something really low. Next we put one in there and one in there. I might have got those the wrong way around, but we'll soon find out. Okay, so we can see that now working. Um, if we go to our model here, well, yeah, we definitely hit save, hit save, shrink that down, and we'll just apply that onto our asset like so. Now it's a bit faster at the moment, I'd say, so let's try reducing that speed down to say, I don't know, 0.5. And also, I do think I've got these the wrong way around, so I'm just going to swap those over.
Obviously, you can make this a lot more um, um, if you combine this with a texture that had, say, um, you know, different icons on here, that you could have the icons glow. So that would be really easy to do just with a lerp and like another texture kind of thing. So it doesn't need to be as kind of simple as this. So if we just hit save, that's, that's all right, really, I think. So all we need to do now is go to our sequencer and we'll just right click and we'll just create a new sequencer um, that is with animation and then level sequence. And I'll just call this flashy. Just for an example. Double click in there and we'll go to track and we'll add our button. Um, now at the moment, you can see we've got nothing we can really control in here. So um, if we hit this track though and go to static mesh component and then hit plus and make sure we've got the right material, which is element one. And then from within element one, we should see glow color, glow max, and glow min. So if we just add in glow max here, and we'll just set this to zero, and you can see it keyframes it automatically. Now you can see the buttons are flashing. Now the reason they're doing that is because this glow max, we need that to match that parameter exactly. So maybe we'll just put 0 0.05 in. So maybe we'll also add in glow min, uh, 0.1. Okay, we'll put 0.1 then. There we go, now they both kind of match. So we will take this on to say frame 30, and we'll add a key, and then we'll go to say frame 32, and we'll put this up to say 40. So now we should see our buttons come on there and if we wanted to turn them off we would add another key for 40 there wind it on a couple of frames and put 0 0.1 in there so now when we play this our buttons start to flash and then they stop so yeah, it's a really simple way of setting that up. Um, obviously, you can do stuff through Blueprint too. Um, this is just a really nice, quick way of being able to control all of them through sequencer just with one kind of variable.